I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth and I'm Coach Victoria and in this video we're going to be talking to you about why my ex regretted the breakup. Mm. What a relief. Yeah. You love to hear it. This is what everybody <laughs> wants to know. Exactly. You know we say to you guys all the time that exes do regret the breakup and when you're going through it a lot of the time you feel like they're never going to come back. You're depressed, you feel hopeless, you know, you don't think it's ever going to change, that you're ever going to hear from them again. But exes do regret their decisions all the time. That's why I always encourage you to stay motivated on personal growth. Get in the habit of doing the workbooks or the course 30 minutes a day. Get into therapy. Be proactive in healing because you want to put yourself in the best position to reattract them. Mm -hmm. And I think this also shows that you never really know what's going on behind the scenes or what's going on in your ex's mind. A lot of times we can see our ex distance and we just assume they don't care, they've moved on, they don't think about me, but you really don't know. Yep. And so I know you guys like to hear when we have a situation about somebody ex, somebody's ex regretting the breakup and coming back because you want to make your ex regret it. I know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. I want to make them regret what they did to me, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I get it. And so that's why we say do the personal growth because that's one of the biggest things you can do to make somebody regret leaving you, right? Right. So I got an email today from a guy that I did a Skype coaching with. Now here's the deal. This email is from a previous ex that we did calls with years ago, a couple years ago. And so this is from an ex that regrets that breakup. He's currently in another breakup. And so while we were on the call, he mentioned the other situation. We talked about it for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, send me an email of all the things that your ex told you because his previous ex that he was devastated over now regrets the breakup, <laughs> okay? So we're going to get into this one. It's a bit longer, but stick around because you're going to hear all the details of why the ex regrets the breakup and what mm -hmm. happened to him. And you know, a lot of times we see our ex dating somebody new and we're like, oh, I hope they're, uh, they're terrible. <laughs> you know, yeah. you don't want them to live up to what you were in their life. And a lot of times they do turn out to be like a very maybe selfish person or have a lot of problems. And so it always feels nice because you're like, <laughs> you don't want to feel like somebody left you for somebody better, right? right? There's so a you, little cynical part of you. <laughs> exactly. At least part of you wants them to be worse. And it's so interesting because when we're feeling the intensity of an emotion, we tend to think that we are going to feel like that forever. Yeah. Or if we see our partner having an intense emotion or a lack of an intense emotion, we just think this feeling is never going to end. So what you're saying to see how things changed so much mm -hmm. that now he's had coachings with you about a completely different situation, yep. but he's still, you know, receiving a, a different side of things from his ex. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting how things can change. And what you're going to see is that he's not sure what he'll do about this situation yet. He's not completely opposed to dating her again. Mm -hmm. So let's get into this email. It's a little bit longer, but you'll like it. He says, let's call her ex. And she and I were together for two years, ending about seven years ago. Wow. You hear it. I say people come back all the time. This is seven years ago. Mm. And she still is my benchmark relationship. Everything was perfect. It was that spark and never ending flame that everyone yearns for. Communication was great. We always talk things out instead of fighting. Sex was amazing. It was all just the best. So why didn't it work out? You'll see. 
We ended things because she knew she wanted kids. And I could never give her a definitive yes to that. She also knew she wanted her kids to be raised in the predominant local religion, which I absolutely was against. And that's a real deal breaker. Mm -hmm. We split amicably. It was the hardest thing we ever did and cried together for hours before she left. We stayed in a pseudo long distance cyber relationship for years after. Wow. She never came back physically, but we talked a lot. We're intimate in various ways, pictures, videos, and phone calls, and very occasionally saw one another. Last time I saw her in person was roughly five years ago. Mm. I very strongly had a feeling that she was seeing someone, but I was in such a terrible state of mind that I just accepted it and the stupid position I had put myself in. He didn't want to have kids and he didn't want to have kids raised in that religion. And those can be real deal breakers, mm -hmm. but it's tough when you're matching on all those other levels that they were. Yeah. And I do empathize with him a lot. You know, I understand that feeling of, was I a fool by continuing this pseudo relationship, as he said, mm -hmm. for it sounds like a very long time after the relationship ended. Yeah. There are so many parts of us that want to keep that relationship together, sometimes even if we cognitively know that it's not compatible or not going to work long term. Mm -hmm. So I really do empathize with him on that. You know, yeah. it, it does still hurt to see a partner move on, even if we know that that's not the right partner for us. Yeah. Again, this is part of the reasons people regret their decision, mm -hmm. right? He thought he had to go through with it and now he's struggling with it years later and so is she. Mm -hmm. She finally ended things in 2020. I was very, very messed up. Talked to Craig twice and was seeing my local therapist twice a week for months. Started Prozac and had such a negative reaction that I had to hand my guns off to a trusted family member. It was that bad. Wow. I'm really glad that he did have, you know, people around him to support him during that time. Family members that sounds like they were understanding that he trusted enough to let them in on, on what he was going through and that he protected himself even through a really hard time. Yeah. And so many of us feel like that in breakups. Mm -hmm. So if you ever do feel like hurting yourself or worse, please seek out local help for yourself. Mm -hmm. Depending upon where you are in the world, there are various resources there for you. And you always have friends and family that care about you, even if you don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people get so depressed, they can't see how much the people care about them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go on here. I eventually felt better, accepted things for what they were, and went to date others. Got into a year-long relationship that ended in March of 22, as we just weren't each other's person. I took a chance and reached out to X to see if I imagined how good our relationship and communication was, not expecting to hear back at all. Now remember, this is like three years later, mm. okay? This isn't a situation where it had even been a year, three years at this point. She actually responded. We chatted for a bit. I found out she was married and had a kid. She seemed very happy and I was happy for her. A few months go by and we chat very intermittently because I had no desire to insert myself where I wasn't wanted. She ended up confessing to me that she regrets everything. Wow. We're going to get some real juicy details this time. Regrets leaving me. Regrets marrying him and the general path she's taken without me. Granted, no mother regrets their kid, but she wishes he wasn't Ooh, the father. Oh my gosh, I was not ready for that. <laughs> to say I was flabbergasted would be an understatement. I think you were flabbergasted. I am flabbergasted <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, and what, Those it, are strong words. You know, regret. Regret the marriage, regretting him being the father of her child. Wow. And meanwhile, wow. He, at initially, mm -hmm. she had presented as happy to him, too. Mm -hmm. Right? So he didn't even find out right away. He thought she was happy. 
See what I mean? Mm -hmm. What happens behind closed doors? You don't realize these things. You never, never, never know what's going on. And it's very interesting to me that she's admitting this to an ex. And there's more. We were chatting about something totally unrelated. I think another dating situation of mine. And she asked me if she could tell me about some stuff. Proceeds to explain how the relationship was. How he started drinking at one point. Lost his job and she had to become the income earner. How he had left her in the hospital after giving birth with preeclampsia. How she felt like they were just adult roommates at that point, mm. and she wanted someone to love her like I did. She mentioned the time that I accidentally ran into her at the theater, and he was with her. He instantly knew who I was, and their day was ruined. Oh, wow. So this dude clearly heard loads about me. She talked about how she knew our love was special, but it took her being apart from me and being with a total piece of <clears throat> to realize just how special it actually was. Mm. I felt z very surprised but also not surprised. I wasn't expecting her to tell me any of that, as I thought she was legitimately happy with him. But I also know what our relationship was like and just how legitimately great it was. So I was taken aback, a loss for words, kind of amused, I felt very sorry for her, and I am still unsure how to handle things if she comes looking in my direction for real. I would consider dating her again, absolutely. But that is a very short answer to a very complicated question. There was a lot of pain over the years, a lot of heartache, and a lot of dishonesty and poor communication. Frankly, I have resented around her choosing to marry and procreate with him. It's interesting. He's angry about that, but it was ultimately him who said, I don't want to have kids with you. Mm. And that's why she had to leave. But I do applaud him for being able to say that. Yes. You know, the fact that he's self-aware enough to realize I do have resentment towards some of her choices afterwards mm -hmm. makes it easier to work with, you yeah. know, versus him just being passive aggressive or it coming out in different ways. Absolutely. But it's kind of interesting because her point might be, well, I wanted to have kids mm -hmm. with you, but you didn't want to. Right. You know, and that's a valid point, too. Okay. I'm great, and we were next to perfect together, but we were also young and dumb. Her child is a gigantic variable in the equation now. She will always have to put her kid first, as it should be, but that also means she will never put me as the number one priority. Make no mistake, this girl is and was instrumental in me finding out who I am in this world and is simply one of the most defining aspects of my life. I am not sure what kind of person I would be had I never met her, but does that mean it's an immediate yes to her coming back? I have to consider so many things, so many variables before it could work out. The amount of processing it would take would be tremendous, but that's not inherently a deal breaker, just more of a gigantic road bump. That also does not mean it's inherently a no either. I have no clue how I will handle things as there are a lot of baggage to process and get through, but it's definitely not a definite answer in either direction. She's still working through various divorce processes, mm -hmm. so we haven't seen one another, but we intend on sitting down for dinner and a conversation at one point. I never expected this to happen. I thought she was gone entirely. I did stop yearning for her, dreaming of her, and wishing for her, but I never stopped thinking of her, and she never stopped thinking of me. Apparently, I was often brought up in arguments with her spouse. Mm. That made me laugh so hard when I heard it, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh my gosh. I would consider dating her again, absolutely. But 
That is a very short answer to a very complicated question. I didn't wait for this, nor did I even think it was possible the way things left off. You could imagine, she's married with a kid and she, he thought she was happy. Mm -hmm. But if this is the kind of thing that can happen, other situations can turn around as well. I had to focus on being the best version of myself and keep putting one foot in front of the other. And as Craig knows, I am dealing with another difficult romantic situation, which I am incredibly and frustratingly very depressed over still. My mind is currently stuck on the most recent woman. Life keeps moving, but you have to keep moving with it. Thanks for your hope, Craig, and tell Victoria thanks as well. He says thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> so, you see a situation here where this guy thought she was completely gone, happy in her life, married to somebody else, and then you hear all these details. Mm -hmm. Unhappy, wishes the guy wasn't the father, he treats her terribly, yeah. and on some level you must feel like, well, I knew we had something special. Mm -hmm. And now you're with some other guy. Now, part of the situation is she did want kids. He didn't want to. And so had he, you know, been willing to work with her on that or, you know, considered her having a kid with her, they wouldn't have gone through the breakup. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like they weren't aligned. But now he's considering it. And n now he has to deal with this other guy being around and you know her child with him mm -hmm. so that's going to make things more complicated but you see all kinds of things in here on why an ex might regret their decision mm -hmm. in detail right and there might still be roadblocks but you truly never know how those things will pan out yeah you know it's i think the story is really telling that we just don't know what's going on in, in another person's life or mm -hmm. we also just don't know that if we truly get the thing that we're very stubborn on that would it will go the way that we imagine mm -hmm. you know it seems like she had this romanticized idea about having kids and having this type of a, a lifestyle but it really does make a difference on who you choose to have that lifestyle with absolutely and sometimes you just have to weigh out your options and not necessarily compromise on your values but see what what is valuable to me here what is worth negotiating mm -hmm. how can we find some type of middle ground is there urgency in this matter is there not mm -hmm. so to me you know in in this situation i'm sure they had a lot of conversations about what it would be like to have kids about you know sh there was the whole religious aspect too mm -hmm. um but you know there was three years a significant amount of time where the two of you were still playing on that fence yeah and remember this ended seven years ago wow so for those of you that doubt that exes come back or they doubt thinking about you here's another example and now he's stuck on this current breakup not with her she's you know, I'm sure wanting to get divorced from this other guy. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll wind up together again. He's certainly open to it. It sounds like she is too. So we'll see how it goes. But I just wanted to share this one because it was a great example of the regrets people go through that you think aren't there. And then you see what happens behind closed doors. Even in the beginning, she presented as happy. Mm -hmm. And then the floodgates open and you hear all the real truth. Mm -hmm. So many of the, these things are happening with your ex obviously with varying degrees based on your situation that you'd be surprised about right and the stories that we tell ourselves are often a lot loftier than the reality in our mind we might be thinking okay she's super happy with this family mm -hmm. she's moved on she probably doesn't think about me at all mm -hmm. you no know, it's probably not something that she really considers meanwhile he's saying all of these positive things about their relationship it was a benchmark for him mm -hmm. it sounds like this relationship really redefined how he viewed love and relationships in general but you know the more we peel back the layers of that onion we find that no this was important to her and it sounds like it was equally important absolutely you know it sounds like this relationship also set a standard for her that she didn't realize at the moment but later on realized through her experiences that's right and that's what happens mm -hmm. all the time that's why we say exes come back all the time uh, sometimes they think life is going to be better and they learn that it's not 
And that's why we say focus on the personal growth because when they mm -hmm. come back, you want to be ready. And look at how mature he is and look at how much work he's done on himself mm -hmm. since they broke up. And you also have to consider what emotions and feelings come up in that period of time where you're not together. Mm -hmm. One thing I really like about this email is that he was able to pinpoint, yes, I do feel resentment for the choices that she made even after I broke up with her. Yep. You know, it's even if it's irrational, even if somebody could say, well, you broke up with her, you shouldn't be feeling angry, but I do. Okay, let's work through that. Let's deal with that. Yep. You know, him being honest with himself and, and authentic with his feelings, I think is something that's really respectable and something healthy. I do too. And, and you know, that he's aware of it, it's going to be more likely to handle it like an adult as opposed to he's not sure and he's just lashing out or, mm -hmm. you know, fighting with her because he's angry when he thinks about it. You know right. what I mean? You have to make the conscious or the unconscious conscious, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. And that's part of the reason we did a lot of the activities in the creative healing course. Mm -hmm. You know, where we're talking about in the beginning of the course is stuff on the unconscious mm -hmm. because so much of our behavior is based on things that we're feeling in our unconscious fears, wishes, desires, and all those things. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. have to bring that out. The more you're aware of it, the more you can navigate like an adult. Exactly. All right. I had one final okay. thought. Okay. Now he does have that decision. I know many of you are watching this thinking, I don't want to wait seven years yeah. for then, you know, my ex to be in a different position, which might be not a position that I want to be in a relationship with. You know, mm -hmm. he's now having to deal with, okay, now she has a daughter. Now life is very different for me and for her. How mm -hmm. would this practically work? You always do have that choice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So time might pass it might be months it might be three months six months a year so on and so forth but you always have that choice to set your standards and decide is this a situation that i do want to go back into and things might change to where at some point you might say no it's not or yes it is even more now that things have changed yep so but and one other last point is that he also made it very clear that he didn't wait he had moved on he didn't think it was ever going to come back again, which we often say. Mm -hmm. And th and then all of this happened, right? Yeah. All right. Hopefully this one's been helpful to you. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, you can do that on my website, AskCraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Coach Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you'd like to chat. Just click on her name on the top of the website to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.